Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor Thomas Goss, four weeks into 2013, with a video tip about how to score read natural horn and trumpet parts. One thing that holds a lot of score readers back at first is the ability to score read transposing parts. The brass section can appear especially confusing. In a typical score, the trumpets might be in one key and the horns in another, neither of which is actual concert pitch. As a result, new score readers often avoid following the brass very closely. They miss cues, visually pass over interesting passages, and focus mostly on the big splashy bits. When that score reader composes their own orchestral piece, how will it sound? Probably the brass will only be playing parts that reflect what the composer has really absorbed while score reading. And that's a shame, because reading and mentally transposing the brass section in classical period scores is actually not that complicated, if you know a little bit of approach in history. Let's start with the horns. Originally, horns had no valves and could only play notes based on the harmonic series, with the occasional stop note to go up a half step. Horn players used different lengths of tubing called crooks in order to lower the pitch of their instruments, which would pitch the harmonic series in different keys. In order to cover all the notes that might be needed in a piece, a classical composer might have two pairs of horns in two different keys. But no matter what key natural horns were playing in, they were always reading the same notes. C and G below the treble staff, the triad of C, E, and G, and above that, C, D, E, and G. The slightly out-of-tune notes of B-flat and F-sharp were also available, corrected with the right hand and the bell. In other words, 11 notes. have to worry about reading 11 notes, most of them covering the structure of a major chord, then it's simple to make sense of a classical score. If the piece is in E-flat, and the horns are in E-flat, then those 11 notes are playing mostly over the tonic chord. A written C would equal E-flat, G would equal B-flat, and so on. As you watch the horns emphasize the tonic and dominant chords, you start to notice certain patterns common to many different symphonic works. the sidebar for some suggestions of works to score read. I start you on a classical symphony movement with horns in C, then F, E flat, and G. Then you can go on score reading on your own in works all the way from the Baroque to the Romantic era. Most of what I said about reading classical horns applies to classical trumpet parts. They cover the same written range, except for not playing the low C. Natural trumpets used crooks to change keys, but they couldn't stop notes like a horn, and the bad B-flat and F-sharp were corrected by lip pressure. So when score reading trumpet in classical works, use the same principles I recommend for horns, and all the notes should fall neatly into place as you read. In later scores, using chromatic horns and trumpets, the transpositions become more complex, since the instruments are no longer limited to the harmonic series and can play any note in the respective ranges. But even so, training yourself to easily recognize notes in natural trumpet and horn parts is an excellent preparation for more modern scores, and for learning to transpose quickly for any instrument, brass or not. Along with some suggested score reading, I've posted links in the sidebar to this week's daily orchestration tips, all of which deal with some aspect of the French horn. Some of these tips are not in any orchestration book I've ever read. Click through to read them, or please join the Facebook group yourself to share your music and ideas with a growing crowd of orchestrators.
to see you next week when we take a look at the interlocking phrasing of Tchaikovsky.